What are the biggest mistakes I've seen when people spend money on golf clubs? Let's do it. Well, let's do it now. Oh, there's some mistakes. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. Guys, we are back outside walking because we're still not allowed to play golf. Um, but to be honest, these videos have got some really good comments, just me and Gaz taking a nice socially distanced walk around the golf course and just discussing things that we think could help you with your golf game or help you with your golf equipment. So today, we're talking about the biggest mistakes we've made and seen when people spend money on golf clubs. And it's something which... I, mean, I don't know about you, mate, but I've made a fair oh. few mistakes. Oh, we've made mistakes. We've made mistakes. Guys, if you've not checked out Gaza's channel, make sure you do. Gary Martin Golf, you're cracking it, mate, aren't you, to be fair? I'm really enjoying it, yeah. I'm really enjoying the process of making a video, you know. Uh, I'd class myself as about a 20 handicap, really, <laughs> yeah. but, but I'm enjoying it, and I'm, I feel like I'm getting better, knocking a stroke off every time. <laughs> Brilliant. So you just mentioned handicap there, and that's kind of the first point I wanted to cover in that one of the big mistakes I see is people who buy clubs for handicap brackets. Like, so you say, a mid-handicap set of golf clubs, a high-handicap set of golf clubs, or a low-handicap driver. Today, I've just reviewed the new Titleist TSI 4, which is a low-spin driver. But people might say, well, that's a low-handicap driver. But actually, you can't kind of categorise something because if you're a high-handicap player or a low-handicap player, you might have the handicap because you're terrible at putting or you're terrible at chipping. That's a or, great point. Like, you've got to yeah. try these things and make sure they're right for you. What would you add to that? I think that's an absolutely fantastic point. You know, just because you're a 20 handicapper might mean might not mean that you, you, you drive like a 20 handicapper. That could be a strength and you might be, you know, strike the ball as well as a 9 handicapper. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you could have a bad wedge game, you know, shanker or a pusher. Uh, you put bad putter, so no, I think I've not even thought about that point myself. So that's yeah. a really good point. I think for me, the optimum thing you can can do is go for a fitting, but then be careful what you do when you go for a fitting. So another point for me is don't. One of the big mistakes I see is if your brand, uh, what's the word? Brand. I can't think. Brand. Loyal. If you're brand loyal, so if you're mad on TaylorMade, you're mad on Titleist, you're a ping nut you go for a fitting with one brand and they'll fit you into the driver that they've got that suits you which is brilliant but for me you can't be going what are you pointing at me then i've made this mistake haven't i yeah i went to ping for a fitting for some irons i've, I've, I've hooked him up there with that did one. you know that this were coming <laughs> yeah. and uh, i ended up matching wedges up yeah i've always i've always used vokies i've loved vokies for all my life and i had these ping wedges in my bag a few weeks and then i went back to vokies yeah and, uh, and and if you're making that mistake as a pga exactly, pro then yeah I'm sure a lot of people will so like I just think if you go and get fitted somewhere that can give you an array of, of options I mean to be honest I've been for fittings at places that offer different brands I've been for fittings at Titleist, at Ping, at TaylorMade I've made videos on all of them and I do think the service you get with the big brands is better because they know the products a little bit more which you would expect because it's their product and they work for TaylorMade Tice or yeah. Ping or Callaway or Mizuno or whoever. But I think if you're going to do that, go to the different brands and spend the time and maybe the money. Obviously, if you're not going to buy a driver from the brand, they might charge you for the fitting. But go and spend... Um, oh, cramping my arm there. But go and spend the time and the effort. And actually, you might, be, you might find that you enjoy the fitting process and maybe go and judge them on the fittings as well and yeah. think, well... I enjoyed the Titleist fitting more than the tailor-made fitting, but the ping fitting was the best one, and then the Callaway driver was, I don't know. But I think what I've done over the years is, um, you know, if I've been interested in sort of two or three different styles of irons because I've liked the look of them, yeah. I've tend, tend to try and get older a demo and try them before I book a fitting. Yeah. And then once I've sort of got a good feel and, I, you know, something's taking my fancy, then I'll get a fitting on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you're exactly right. If you just uh, go and have one fitting, and you're not really, you know, possibly going to get fit into the wrong iron, aren't you? Yeah, and just like you, so, just like you, sorry. Oh, I've done but, it. Yeah, you've done it, and we've, we've all done it. Like, I, when I was playing a lot, um, I, was, I went down to Titleist, got a full full set, full fit in, done. I never tried the other brands, and then you never know, you might get that extra couple of miles an hour ball speed, you might get that little bit of spin rate difference that you're after, and things yeah. like that. Tiny little differences, tiny gains, which... That's all we get when we change golf clubs anyway, so you might as well get the gains right and go that way. So that's like another tip for me, which is massive. And another one is, 
what's right for you isn't right for me. That's and what's right for you isn't right for me, and what's right for me isn't right for you. In that, we've all, I mean, you're, I mean, sorry guys, I'm dropping you in here again, but when you try your mate's driver on a tee and you nail it, yeah. and then you go and get it like straight away, we've all done it, I've done it as well. I mean, you're using me as an example, but this happens all the time, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I've worked at golf clubs where someone's, in, you know, in fiddles bought a, or roll ups bought a driver, a ping driver, and then old fiddle wants, or roll up yeah, wants yeah. one. Yeah. Keep saying fiddle. Sorry about that. that. That's what they used to call it at our old yeah. golf club. It. No, they did. Right. Well, we're at the same club, weren't we? But yeah. Um, yeah. So like, there's always the old. Have you seen Tony's got that new driver? That yeah. Taylor made. It was what was it? Um, I think the big one was either the Ping G400. Yeah. Or the Ping or the um, Taylor made M2. M2. Yeah. Oh, have you seen that M2? He's got that white yeah. one. He, and yeah, people just came in and they'd literally buy it. Just in the same specs because they've hit two or three shots with it on yeah, the. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And I, I find they that. They want to fit in. They just no. want to what Tony have bought. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you can relate to that, guys, get in the comments and let me know what the worst mistakes you've made when buying golf clubs are. But I think we've covered a few there. Have you got any more to add, guys? Um, I think as, I think one of the biggest things I see is more from your mid to high handicappers where, you know, they might like the look of a blade. And look, I'm. I'm using it as an example, but we've done it, haven't we? Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it, we have played golf for a long time, so I guess we will have made a lot of mistakes. But you know, trying to buy that iron that you think you can progress to, but ultimately it slows your progression down. You know, yeah. so trying to think too far ahead, you know, you've got to get there first, haven't you? Yeah, you've definitely got um, to get there. And, so, you, and again, I think one of the big talking points that that comes here is what suits you doesn't suit me. And I've, I just said that a minute ago, but you have to get what's right for you, don't you? And Sometimes that isn't always, there isn't always an easy way of finding that without going and getting maybe a proper fitting and a proper, a proper trial. Another one for me is don't discredit the cheaper clubs. I mean, we, I've seen it mainly when I've spent time in Dubai and stuff, and you might have, might have done as well. Someone walks into the shop and says, I'll have the most expensive set of clubs. Yeah. Because people think they're obviously the best ones. And I yeah. mean, the testing I've done over the years now, I can't believe I've been testing clubs for years, but... They're not always the best ones. Very rarely they are the best ones. It's just kind of bigger marketing budgets, bigger brand name. Yeah. And from there you can go. Like the Ben Ross stuff that I tested a couple of weeks ago was decent. It was, depending on the level you wanted to play to, it was as good as anything else. Half the price. Yeah. Obviously, if you want to play to a really high level, you want to compete and you want to get your handicap down, you maybe want to spend that extra bit of money to get the marginal gains again yeah. through there. But if you're starting out golf and you don't necessarily want to spend a fortune, just kind of buy within, not within your means, because everyone's got different means and different budgets, but don't go and blow a load of money on. I think, I think the probably point you could be getting to is that you could spend double the amount of money for such a little gain. Yeah. There might not be that gain value to you, you know, like, you know, if it's the difference between 2,000 and 1,000, I don't see the value in £1,000 if it's only going to make you a yard longer. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I suppose you're right in that respect. And then you look at where you, where you could spend that money. Yeah. So people spend money on product, on things that you can hold, on things that you can hit. But spending money on knowledge, so going for lessons and, and things like that, on-course lessons, short yeah. game lessons... That's going to get you better at golf that, quicker. That could gain you 25 yards. Exactly, yeah. for, for a lot less money, but you've not got a new shiny driver with a new head cover on. So your mates in the fiddle, yeah. or the roll-up, or the mates who you play with on a Saturday morning, might not think, oh, he's been spending loads of money on his golf. If you want people to know you've spent money on golf, then I don't know really what like people. some people do, don't they? But a lot of people, I've had people who come for lessons who don't want people to know they've come for lessons. Like one of the stipulations is, look, James, want to come for lessons, want to get better, I'll book a lesson every couple of weeks or a lesson every month, but I don't want people to know. I think another point as well when you're buying clubs is to, is to try and seek advice, whether it's watching YouTube reviews, which obviously you guys do, or it's speaking to a club pro. Um, get as much advice as you can, you know, and get, I, I always do this, whatever I'm buying these days, whether it's golf clubs or whatever I'm buying, I like to look at positive and negatives, you know, and, yeah. and sort of work, try and work as much out as for yourself as you can. There'll be loads of people buying a Ford KA after my video. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, I mean, and one of the big points I kind of want to almost wrap up on, I don't know where we've gone here, we've just like walked. Uh, we're at Furbury's we're point. At again, yeah, should we? We'll start walking back. back. Um, one of the big points for me was don't buy something on a review that I've done or a review that Gaz has done or a review that Mark's done or Rick's done or anyone's done because it's a personal thing like a review is an opinion 
on something. Yeah. And a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to buy that because you've said it was good. Yeah. But it was good for me. Like, I enjoyed it. Like, yeah. to be honest, you don't see many bad golf clubs anymore because the manufacturers know that they're just not going to work. Like, they're not going to sell. Yeah. But because I've done a test on a new Sailor Made Sim 2 against the Titleist TSI 3, and the Sim 2's gone two yards further, or the TSI 3's gone one yard further, that doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that for you it's going to be the same. And then that comes back round to the idea of getting fit, going trying them, yeah, and all the rest. Definitely, yeah. I think you're right on that. Maybe that's a, a really good point. Is even though I mentioned to watch the reviews wheels, I think they're just a starting point to process, aren't they? Absolutely. And even yeah. down to um, tailor made sales rocketed when they signed Tiger Woods. I'll tell you what I'm going to start talking about in reviews as well. Is a little bit more about the quality of the engineering and the and the manufacturer yeah you know, what the after sales is like and that kind of thing you know that could steer someone because that's massive isn't it if Definitely. a driver breaks or something like that sorry my arm's dead now if a driver breaks then the after sales is massive and yeah. um just going back to the point i touched on there about tailor-made sales absolutely flew when they signed tiger woods yeah but you're not tiger woods and i'm not tiger woods and you're not yeah. tiger woods and the fact that a tour pro is probably being paid a lot of money to say things about a product. I'm not singling out TaylorMade or Tiger there, like Rory again with TaylorMade or... I mean, TaylorMade won't thank me for this, but I always question who's paying for it. But you know, it's, it's, it's the consumer, isn't it? It's, it's the consumer, customer, yeah. So, you know, um, if, if they've got two of the biggest players in the world playing for them... Yeah. Um, and that's why I always look at... It. If I'm going to look at that and I'm looking at who's using what, I'll almost look at the, the non-contracted players, like, I'm not sure if he's still using them, but Brooks Kapka put Strix and Irons in the bag last week. You wouldn't know that, would you? That's Just, an absolute beauty, that. Because Strix and aren't allowed to, yeah. to use that as marketing. That's an absolute beauty, yeah. He's been using Mizuno, I think, for a long time. I remember uh, Matt Fitzpatrick using an old TaylorMade M2. Yeah, up until last year. Yeah. And he's just put a TSI 3 in the bag, again, uncontracted. And driver-wise, there's been a lot of players putting TSI 2, TSI 3 in the bag, which is interesting because I think that speaks volumes for the driver and the product, and then the, the, the uncontracted stuff is probably more important to them than yeah. their big name players. I mean, so. if, like you said, if they're not getting paid to use it, it must be good. Yeah. Um, so I'll tell you what, guys, I think we've given them hopefully a few points there to save you some money and not, well, basically not waste money, so save yourself some money. But guys, if you can think of any big mistakes, that a lot of people make then get in the comments below and we'll use it as a bit of a forum again if you've got any questions for gaz go over to his channel and ask him don't flood my room <laughs> <laughs> no I'll, I'll look at james's comments i always do um so guys thank you so much for watching i really hope you've enjoyed that bit of a walk it's getting colder now so we're gonna go in uh, apart from that smash that subscribe button below leave us a like i'll see you tomorrow Bye.